Hello and welcome to day six of the Floral Craft Countdown, where I'm showing you how to make 14 different paper craft flower projects with a Cricut machine in 14 days. Today we're making this gorgeous layered orchid out of cardstock. It's beautiful when it's all stuck together and it's perfect for putting in a frame like I've done here or on a greetings card or even just to prop up on your shelf. Let's find out how to make it. The files for this project are free for the next 24 hours. Here's how to download them. Register a free ticket for the Floral Craft Countdown at craftwithsarah.com forward slash floral. After registering, you'll get an email which contains a link to the schedule page for the countdown. Visit the schedule page to find and download today's files. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you have missed some, check out the Instant Access Bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash floral bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Floral Craft Countdown, plus loads of extra bonus designs. The download comes in a zip folder. You will need to unzip this before uploading the SDG files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder, it's time to get the SVG file into Cricut Design Space. If you're not sure how to do that, check out the Foundation Learning section of this craft countdown where there's a link to a separate video and tutorial on how to upload SVGs into Cricut Design Space. This is what it looks like when it comes in and you can see all the pieces in the design by clicking the little arrow next to it in your layers panel and that will show all the pieces or layers that make up this design. There are a few things you may wish to do before cutting this out. Firstly, you might want to remove the mandala circle from behind the orchid and just cut out the flowers. To do that, look down the very bottom of the layers panel and then the bottom two layers here, you can either hide them temporarily by hovering and pressing the eye icon that appears. That means it won't cut out anymore, but if you wanted to turn it back on later, you still could. Or for a more permanent solution, you can click the layer, and then click the trash can icon at the top to delete it and then do the same for the solid layer underneath. Then you're left with just the flowers. You might also want to recolor the design. If the colors you want to change it to are already present in the design, for example, if I wanted to make the petals white, I've already got a white in these middle circles. So what I could do is choose color sync on the top right of the screen. This separates out everything by color. Then I can look down, find my white and my pale pink petals and drag the pale pink into the white to change everything at once. I like to use two slightly different colours when I'm doing layering projects like this because it helps to build up the depth. So let's go for a slightly off white for those back petals. And then again, we can go to colour sync and this time drag them into that off white to change them in one go. And then perhaps my little middle bits that kind of look like a lady with her hands in the air could be yellow. And then if you want to change it to a color that isn't already present, simply find that layer in the layers panel. So I've clicked back to layers up here. And then let's click on the flower pot layer, which is this yellow one. I could change that to a purple. And then the one underneath, I'm um, sorry, on top, which is the base, maybe a dark purple. So that's how you can change the colours really, really quickly and easily. And if you are changing them, I do recommend doing it in Design Space rather than just cutting it out of different colours of card because it just lets you see and check that you're happy with everything before you actually start using up your card. However, I'm going to cut mine exactly as it loaded in. So I'll just hit that undo button until everything's back. The other thing you probably do want to do, <laughs> it's definitely a good idea to do, is to check the size to make sure that you can fit it into your finished shadow box or on a greetings card or wherever it is that you're going to be putting the design. To resize, make sure the padlock icon above the width and the height boxes is closed. If it's open, you can just click on that padlock to close it. And that means you can then resize either the width or the height and press enter on your keyboard and the other measurement will change in proportion. 
If you've already got your shadow box frame, then measure it to check that your design is going to fit. I have a separate video and tutorial on how to um, frame layered paper craft projects so that they'll fit perfectly in your frame every time and a little clever little hack to make sure that everything's stuck perfectly straight and centred. To find that tutorial, look in the foundation learning section of this craft countdown and look for the project which is called the best ever way to frame paper craft projects. I'm going to go ahead and follow the steps in that separate tutorial now to create my layers and backgrounds for my shadow box, but I'll show you how it looks before I get ready to cut. Here's how my project looks after following the steps in the other video and tutorial on how to frame layered paper craft projects. I'm going to have three separate squares of coloured card behind my orchid design to help fill up the frame because it's quite a big frame and also just to add a little bit more visual interest. So I've got a pink which will go in the very back, then a white and then for this yellow one I'm actually going to use a flower patterned paper that I have which is going to look lovely behind all the colours in the orchid. So this is now ready for me to go ahead and press make and that will separate out all of the different colours. You can change the paper size by clicking into here. This one's a little bit too big for my usual A4 paper so I'll need to use the 12 by 12 and um, I'm just going to try and find one with several pieces. Let's go for this one. All right, so let's change the paper size on here. And then if you want to, you can drag and drop the shapes around to use up a little bit less space on your cardstock. So if there are some sheets that only need a little bit of color, you might be able to move these around to fit some of your card scraps left over from other projects. When you're happy with how all the pages are looking, press continue to connect to your Cricut and then follow the on-screen instructions to get everything cut out from cardstock. Here are all the pieces of my orchid cut out and I've led them on top of each other following the assembly guide that's included in your download folder just to make sure that I'm happy with where everything is sitting and that I'm happy with the colours and that I haven't lost anything. One thing I have already done is I've just glued the little white circles onto each of the middles of the flowers because I was a little bit worried I was going to lose them. But apart from that, everything else is still unstuck. We'll be putting this together with a combination of glue and foam squares. The glue I'm using is Barely Art Glue. If you live in the UK like me, it's a little bit tricky to get hold of, but I managed to find some on Amazon. Or another glue which is available a bit easier in the UK is Kalal. Both of these glues are great because they don't bend or wrinkle the cardstock like some glues can do. Just be warned that the Kalal is a solvent glue, so it has a little bit of a smell to it, whereas the Barely Art glue is a white glue and it doesn't smell. And then to add some dimension... I'll be using foam squares. These are the ones I've got, which are nice and small, but any brand or make will do. If yours are big, you might just need to cut them smaller with a pair of scissors. We'll start at the bottom and work our way upwards, which means I now need to move all of these pieces apart. I'm going to try and keep kind of matching little sets of layers together seeing as we've already gone to the effort of putting it in the right place. So we don't want to completely get rid of all of that. I'll move these and then you'll just be left with the two bottom pieces of the mandala background. It's a little bit hard to see because I've got white on a white table. I've used a slight pearly sheen card for the very bottom piece. Not sure you can really tell, but in real life, it looks nice. And this one also has a tiny little sheen to it, but it's a lighter white. Um, so together, when they're put on top of each other, it catches the light a little bit, which is really pretty. But it's subtle, which is what I was kind of going for. Okay, this one will be a glue layer, which you'll be pleased about because of all of the thin pieces in it. So I'm going to add my glue to the back and try and get some around all the edge. The nice thing about the Barely Art glue is that it comes with a really thin nozzle, whereas the Kalal doesn't, but you can buy needle tip applicator bottles 
online, which are separate bottles to put the glue into, that have the really tiny nibs like this one. Um, so that's what I do when I'm using the colour. It just makes it so much easier having it in a bottle with a tiny nozzle. And then glue this on top or position it on top. Make sure you don't push down too hard because you don't want the glue to smush out from any of those thin bits and become visible. But both these glues do dry clear, so if a little bit comes out, it is not the end of the world. Next is the piece which makes up the stick holding the orchid in place. And for this one, I use my foam squares. You want to try and put your foam in the kind of sticky out bits, like the leaves. It will just give it a better 3D effect if there's lots in all the bits so that they're not going to sort of bend down and touch the card underneath, which they would do if there was nothing to hold them in place. But just by putting these bits in, it means you have a better stick. And that one just about fits in that circle. And I think that one will go in there. But for the other ones, I'll have to cut my foam squares smaller with scissors. You want to make sure that your foam squares don't go out over any of the edges, otherwise you'll be able to see them when it's all stuck together, which we don't want. We want them to be nice and hidden. So for these circles and also in there, I'll need to cut these smaller. So I just run down a strip of them, a pair of scissors, they cut nice and easily. And the hardest bit though is actually working with them when they're this small can be a little tricky. But now that fits beautifully. Okay, now I can peel the tops off of all of this to reveal the stickiness underneath. Now we can get this into position and I'm going to use the bottom to line it up and also you can see the outline of the shapes on top of the mandala. Get it into position and then gently drop it down and that means you can reposition it if you need to um, because it hasn't actually stuck down yet so if you weren't happy you can move bits about. But actually I think that's pretty good so I'll push down to get it all stuck. Next, we've got the layer which makes up the very back leaves, and this will be a glue piece. It's a little bit fiddly because of all the sticky out bits. Just move it into place, and the nice thing about glue is you can wiggle it around to get everything where it needs to go. there. All right, moving on to some of the other leaves. We've got this piece next, which we'll add the foam squares for. This one lines up along the bottom and you've got the leaves to know where to put the rest of it. Like that. Then we've got the darker piece, which is a glue layer. Okay, we'll stick with the flower pot. And next is the brown, which is the dirt inside. And we'll glue this one on. There. And then... Um... Just trying to think on this one. I think I'll glue this one on too. Like that. And use foam square for the leaf on top. Like that one. Oh, no, that was wrong. <laughs> that serves me right for not uh, paying attention. We've got this one first, which is the bottom of the uh, flower pot. 
<laughs> and actually I'll put my phone on this one. Did you notice I was doing that? Were you shouting at the video? Sarah, stop! <laughs> right, that one. Like that. And then now that this is raised up from the main flower pot, I'll add glue for the leaf. Crisis averted. There. I'll put a little orchid's looking a little bare at the moment, so we'd better add some flowers. I'll go for the top ones first, which are the smaller ones. So, starting with the pink at the bottom, this will be foamed on. There we go. Then we've got the larger, lighter one, which again will be foamed. Then the smaller, darker piece. This one will be done with glue because we've already raised up the flower with that light bit underneath. So this one we can glue. And then finally, for the petals, we've got this one, which will be foamed. Okay, lovely. Now for the middle bits, you can choose if you want to glue them or foam them. I'm going to glue them because they are quite small and I'll put the glue straight on there. As I said, I've already glued the little circles on. These shapes are funny, they sort of look like a woman with her hands in the air, doing a little dance. <laughs> okay, there's those two. Then for our remaining flower, foam squares for this one. Put that into place. You can probably guess, foam squares for this one. And then the middle bit, this one is bigger, so you could foam it, but I'm going to glue it just so it stays consistent with the other ones. There we go. And if you hadn't already glued your little white circles on, you would just need to do that. But apart from that, there are my beautiful layered cardstock orchids, all finished. If I turn it round. You can see the dimension in there, giving that stacked appearance. It's really, really pretty. Got the little shine on my white card, and that's now all ready to be framed. Here's my orchid design. Now I've put it in my frame. So I've cut three different squares of paper. I've got my patterned pink, the white, and then this yellow floral pattern. Glued them all together and just stuck the orchid in the middle. And it looks beautiful in the frame. I don't think the patterns are too overpowering away from the flowers. This was a really old paper pack I had, so I don't think they make it anymore, but it was just perfect for this. And it looks so much more finished when it's all nicely in the frame. I've left the glass out of my frame just so it doesn't catch on my camera lights and you can see it a little bit better. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a papercraft orchid with your Cricut machine. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you tomorrow for day seven of the Floral Craft Countdown. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!